What's going on YouTube? I'm Controversy and welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to be doing our first ever Overwatch 2 tier list. This is something that I wanted to make earlier in the season, but due to the hot fixes, I wanted to make sure that I could provide you guys with the most accurate tier list that you could possibly find. There's a lot of heroes to go over and I don't want to waste any more time, so let's go ahead and hop right into the video. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and start off with tanks. The very first tank we got here is D.Va. D.Va can be pretty strong, but currently the way that the meta is right now, she really doesn't have a whole lot of usage outside of diving a few of the DPSers that we'll go over. So at this point in time, she's going to go ahead and sit comfortably at B tier. I do think that she is still pretty good and create a lot of space and has a good amount of utility, but she just isn't better than a few of these tanks on the list. Next, we have Wrecking Ball. Now, Wrecking Ball is going to be C tier. He's really not that great. His best usefulness is really just to kind of stall objective. That way, any of your teammates can get back onto the point and try to secure it before the enemy team does. Outside of that, he's really not that great at creating space. A lot of other tanks do the job way better than he does. So for that, he's going to be C tier. Next, we have Arissa, who actually just recently received a buff. I think personally, Arissa is an S tier tank. She's going to be the first S tier tank that we've got on this list so far. And I think that she is very, very strong right now. One of the reasons is because one of the other tanks that she counters, which we'll go over here in a sec. And that is because of all the utility that she has against this one. Also with Ramacha being introduced into the meta, we now have another shield tank, which they just changed the properties of her ultimate to now go through shields. So that does make her a lot more viable. For the first A tier tank, we now have our newest tank, Ramatra. Ramatra just got recently giga buffed and he is really good right now. He just got introduced into competitive this week and it's already showing that he is going to be very viable and he definitely is meta. He also has the ability to self-sustain by going into his nemesis mode once that expires and going into his alt mode immediately afterwards. That way he can gain more armor twice. Overall, I think he's really solid. He's definitely someone you should try. Next, we're going to be going with Doomfist. Now, Doomfist had a very quick fall from grace, coming all the way down from S tier down to B tier. With the recent hotfix changes that they gave him, they did kind of mess him up a little bit, but he is still better than what he was before the buff. He is still Doomfist. You just have to be a little bit more wary of your cooldowns than what you were in Season 2. He He's basically back to how he was pre-buff with having a lot more attributes, but he is still a pretty solid tank. And next we have Zarya. Now Zarya also fell from S tier all the way in season zero. Uh, she was the tank that was kind of destroying the meta for the longest time until they nerfed her and they nerfed her pretty well. So she's definitely in B tier now. She does still have the same, work the same exact way. It's just because of the way that her cooldowns work, it is harder for her to stay alive. So for that reason, she is in B tier. Next, we have Monkey. Now, Monkey is still a very good dive tank. It's just the way that the meta has kind of shifted away from dive that he gets dealt with a lot easier now, especially with Roadhog. He can't really deal with Roadhog at all. And with Ana being uh, buffed the way that she is, and then including the presence of just Reaper in general, he just has a lot of counters that are meta. So it's real, for that reason, he's definitely going to be in B tier. We have our next S tier tank right here, Roadhog. Now, Roadhog obviously is an S tier tank. You, will, you are going to encounter some people who say that he isn't that good, he's not broken, but if you check every top 500 list, you're going to see that Roadhog is absolutely dominating the top 500. Now his reign is coming to an end soon and his S tier rank is going to be tentative because he is going to be getting a rework in January, so he's going to be losing his one shot ability. He's then going to receive another rework. Uh, later on that will kind of change his kit and give him kind of a soft rework to see how he changes with removing the one shot next for sigma sigma is going to be an a tier tank sigma is really good right now he is honestly again one of the better shield tanks that you have his utility and his self-sustainability is incredible his all is arguably one of the best alts in the game along with that he has that really great line what is that melody yeah, honestly, just up close, he's a menace to deal with. His rock plus his primary with having his AoE damage makes him very, very strong to deal with. So for that reason, he's going to be A tier. Next, we have Junker Queen, who is going to be the worst tank on this list. She is not good. They attempted to try to buff her and they actually kind of made her worse by making her hitboxes worse. On top of that, they also reduced the uh, duration, I believe, of her bleed effect on her ultimate. So she she I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking. They tried to make her better, but they actually made her worse while giving her the mythic skin. So that's kind of an L. Um, but yeah, she's really not good right now. I would definitely try to stay away from her. And last up, we have Reinhardt. 
He's really just a very tried and true hero. He's all reliable on the team and he's going to be one of your more faithful teammates to have. He's really good at creating space and holding corners, allowing for a few other DPS just to do pokes behind his shield. And he's honestly just a pretty solid tank. His shatter is great and he's really good at creating space. So he's going to be a B tier tank. And that's it for tanks. Let's go ahead and go on to DPS. And for our very first hero, we got Ash. And I actually think Ash is S tier. Uh, the way that the meta has kind of shifted right now, Ash is really, really, really strong. A lot of heroes like Mercy and Echo are receiving a lot more play. And because the meta is shifting a little bit away from dive, it allows room for Ash to kind of blossom and be able to grow a lot more as a hero. She's easily one of the best poke heroes in the game and her headshots are crazy. She's really good at dealing with other DPSers that can't get close to her. And she actually kind of shreds tanks pretty well too. Plus she can turn a 5v5 into a 6v5, so that's always great. Next we have someone who was also recently buffed and we have Bastion. He is going to be B tier. Bastion just got a buff that made him a little bit better. Not too much better, but definitely enough to move him up from C tier. His entry form has a lot more uptime and his ultimate is actually much better now. Um, so we can actually get picks with it, making him a much better DPS. Next we have Cassidy. Now Cassidy I think is going to stay probably at B tier. Uh, he's really good playing behind shield tanks, but outside of that, he really is just kind of stiff. He's very bland, very basic. Outside of having his magnate, he doesn't really have a whole lot of self-sustainability um, besides the fact that he can hit you for 70 each time. Overall, as much as I love Cassidy, his lack of mobility plus his ultimate really isn't that great. He's got to be B tier for me. Next up, we got our first A tier DPSer, and that's going to be echo now echo is incredibly strong right now she's honestly probably the most slept on hero on this list in my opinion her ability to take out the backline is honestly one of the best as she doesn't have any footsteps so you may not even know that she's there on top of that she combos really well with ramacha's ultimate as since his ultimate is an aoe that damages people over time it allows her beam to deal even more damage and secure a lot more picks if you use it during his ultimate his scan is good right now but if you play echo right you can still make her viable next up we got genji now Genji is going to be a B tier hero. I know some people are going to maybe see that he is lower. Honestly, I think he's pretty good at B tier right now. He can dive onto a few other legends on this tier list, which honestly makes him a little bit more viable. But other than that, the nerf to him made him a lot more niche and basically up the skill ceiling on him even higher than it already was. So for that reason, he's going to be B tier. Next up, we have Hanzo. Now Hanzo, I have at C tier. I really don't think Hanzo is that great. Yes, Hanzo can be strong when shooting down a choke and trying to hit headshots. But other than that, he really doesn't have that much usage. Plus, compared to all the other DPSers on this list, there are quite a bit that deal with him very well. So for that reason, he's going to be C tier. Next up, we have Junkrat. And as much as it pains me to say it, Junkrat is an A tier hero. Junkrat has got to be my least favorite hero on this tier list but i cannot deny that he is a good hero which makes it even scarier because when you're good with him he becomes really just a menace to deal with his ability to two shot every squishy and just be able to deal with literally pretty much any tank as well makes him incredibly strong his ultimate is really just one of the most annoying things in the game and it does so much damage so you can't deny it the fact that he is an a tier hero next up we have tracer now tracer did receive a partial nerf so she is actually falling from s tier down to just a tier this still makes her really good she's still a very strong hero to pick and her ability to backline other support heroes is incredible one of our mutuals called her a cherry picking hero which honestly that's what she is she's really just good for securing those final blows and that's what you should be using her for add that to her self sustainability and you have a very strong legend next up we have Farah, and i think Farah is actually an, another c tier hero Pharah honestly gets dealt with really easily. You know, you have heroes like Ash, you have heroes like Widow, even Ana can kind of deal with Pharah too. Then plus you throw Soldier in there and you really just have a disaster for Pharah and she really can't do a whole lot. Yes, the pharmacy combo can be pretty strong, but for the most part, it can get dealt with. So for these reasons, we're going to put her at C tier. Next up, we have Mei. Now, Mei is a B tier hero. Now, Mei can be pretty good and she's really good at isolating certain tanks in the meta right now. But outside of that, she doesn't have a whole lot of usage outside of just being a nuisance to dive heroes like Genji and Tracer. She has virtually no mobility, so she makes up for that with having her ice block. But outside of that, she's kind of easy to deal with. So for that reason, she's going to be B tier. Next up, we have a Reaper. Now, Reaper is in my opinion always going to remain a top hero because of just how strong tanks are and reaper just is that guy who is like the tank killer his ability to self-sustain and be able to survive longer with wraith is going to make him a nuisance to deal with 
On top of that, you have his one button board clear Blossom, which makes him really, really strong at all times. Next up, despite her multiple nerfs, we have Sojourn, who is still an S tier hero. Sojourn may have lost her ability to one shot on command, but she is still very, very good. They did also nerf her Disruptor Grenade, which removed the slow effect from it, but its damage over time is still incredible. Add that to the fact that she does get more shots in her ultimate now, and she's still a great hero. For our next hero, we have Soldier, and I think Soldier honestly is an A tier hero. I don't think he's incredible and she, he's probably honestly at the bottom of the A tier list, but because of how common Mercy is and how fast Dive is kind of worn out, Soldier has a lot better of a place now. He has great self sustainability and he has a really good time to kill, plus his ultimate is free aimbot, so honestly I think he's an A tier hero. Next up we have Sombra, and Sombra in my opinion is easily one of the worst DPS in the game. I'm not even someone that dislikes her or hates her, I honestly really kind of like Sombra, but they just nerfed her a little bit too hard and I no longer think she's viable, so honestly I would just stay away from her. Next up we have Symmetra. Now Symmetra did receive some buffs, but overall she's still a C tier hero. For what she does, I still think that Torbjorn just does the job better, so I would probably rather pick him. Yes, her turrets can be annoying and her ultimate is pretty good, but outside of that, she doesn't really have a whole lot of usage. I honestly feel like Torbjorn does a much better job at the things that he does in her, so for that reason, he is going to be a B tier hero. The range on his turret automatically makes him better, plus his ultimate is also crazy good and his ability to kind of dual tanks with his self sustainability with his overload, plus the fact that his right click is a shotgun, he's pretty good against tanks too, so I would honestly have him at B tier. And next up, we have Widowmaker. Now, as I was saying earlier, Widow has found a place in this meta now because of surely the fact that dive is not as common anymore. Widow is honestly one of those heroes that you always have to look out for, otherwise she's going to be constantly leaving you in 5v4 team fights. And last up, we have support. First up on the list, we have Ana. Now, Ana is an A tier support. She is incredibly strong right now and definitely one of the best supports in the game. Her recent buff to her healing and damage now allows her to two shot Tracer, plus the buffs to her grenade and sleep dart definitely make her a threat to deal with. Next up, we have Baptiste. Now, I think Baptiste is also an A tier support. His lamp is incredibly strong, plus his window, which is his ultimate, is definitely one of the best ults in the game if you're trying to just push someone off of an area, if you pop it in a choke, or popping, comboing it with Sojourn, Widowmaker, Soldier, all of them can take huge advantage of his ultimate. He has really good self-sustainability plus mobility, and his self-sustain also does healing to his teammates around him. He's just a very strong support legend, and I think you should be playing him. Next up, we have Brig. I think Brig is the worst support on this tier list. Brig is actually so bad that she is getting a rework here soon. So it isn't just my opinion. The devs also think she is not very good, and that is because she is, and that is why she's getting a rework. So not much to talk about. She's not very good. Probably wouldn't use her. Now for the S tier support hero. Kiriko. Kiriko being S tier should not be a surprise to anyone. Her Suzu is literally probably the best utility in the game. Her ultimate is still probably the best ultimate in the game. And she has really good survivability with her swift step. She's also pretty good at dueling long range heroes like Sojourn, Ash, even, even Widow sometimes. Overall, her S tier rating should be at no surprise to anyone, and she's really good. Overall, her S tier rating should be of no surprise to anyone. Next up, we have Lucio. Now, I think Lucio is an A tier support hero. He isn't the best, um, but he's also not very bad either. He's going to be in the same league as both of these other heroes right here. His speed boost is literally one of, again, also going to be one of the best utilities in the game. Comboing it with Ramatra makes his ultimate crazy good. Um, and it also allows him to get closer to close the distance in order to pummel them. Also, him dropping the B quite literally shuts down almost every ultimate in the game uh, that could really mess up their team. So him every time he drops a B, normally you're going to survive an ultimate. And it also makes for really good team fights and to try to take control of the game. So he's going to be A tier. Mercy. Well, as I was saying earlier, Mercy has made her way into the meta. She's really hard to dive against, even though dive has kind of slowly worked its way out. She is still really good because of the sheer fact of being able to damage boost heroes like Echo, Ash, and Sojourn. Um, sometimes you even damage boost a soldier as well. She's just really good. She's overall has one of the best mobility in the game as a support, and she's kind of hard to deal with, which is why hit scan is so good in my opinion. So she's a great hero. She's A tier. Next up, we have the only B tier support, Moira. Moira is okay. She's not terrible, but uh, she's also not that great either. She is basically just a heal bot for the most part. 
all you're really going to get out of her utility wise is damage but if you compare that utility to other heroes like Ana, Baptiste, Lucio, Mercy, Kiriko, she has the worst utility. Um, Zenyatta even has better utility than her, even though I don't think that he is a better hero. Uh, Mora's utility is just not great. For the most part, many people kind of get hard stuck doing damage with her. So for that reason, she's B tier. And lastly, we have Zenyatta. Now Zenyatta is going to be a C tier hero. He's really not that great he gets kind of dove on very easily he can't really fight back to kind of hold himself yes his melee does do more damage but even then he's just not overall that good and he's very pretty easy to pick off so for that reason he's going to be c tier his transcendence is good it is very good at stopping alts as well but it's just not good enough to overall move him up into b tier but there you have it. There is my completed tier list. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please leave a like. And if you guys want to come back and see more Overwatch content, smash that sub button and I'll see you guys in the next video.